Okay, I'm just gonna load. Okay, now from here, I'm gonna unload. There's UD flexion. And you'll see like how the shaft, the center of mass of the golf club goes behind and then out, right? Once you do those little two pieces, then you can just kind of blend it. Okay, we're talking about hands. Well, hand action. So this will be kind of a cool one because there's lots of different ways to do this. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk only about our preferred way, but everybody feels things slightly different based on their own like mental maps of movement and how they get this thing back to the back to the golf ball. Sure. We're gonna talk about everything that these guys can do in your swing to like control face, where the golf club is, the whole deal. Just so you know terms that we're gonna speak on, we've got the center of mass of the golf club, which is really the balance point of the golf club. So it's right there. The hub, which is the point in space in the middle of my grip. Okay, so it's right in there. So we got hub, center of mass, and then face, which is how it's oriented in space this way. So the openness or the closure of the face based on where the center of mass and, and the hub is in space. Okay. So that's a lot to manage. Um, and for, for those individuals that through the strike feel good day in and day out, tour players, those guys are absolute artists and geniuses when it comes to those three points. Mm. Um, and they might not even know it, but they sure. figured it out. Fair enough. Okay, so what our job is, is to kind of expedite this process for players so that they understand how to feel good in the strike area. Okay. Let's go to like P5.5, P6, somewhere in there, and just freeze there, Tej. Good. So what we want, like if we're right in here, our favorite patterns, so if you watch Hovland and mm -hmm. how he works through the strike, you watch Neiman and how he works through the strike, there is only, almost only, a trail wrist extension which is where tj is in space right now to flexion unload okay okay so if you don't turn it all and we just show from extension or flexion to extension we would see that sure see the slow rate of rotation in the face mm -hmm. so go back to the load okay go through the unload slowly beautiful so we just want that okay okay so go ahead and face the camera now when you do that go back to 5.5 .5 or p6 Okay, good. So we're in extension of this trial rest. Okay, now go ahead to flexion. Notice how when we do this, the hub doesn't really move in space that much. It just stayed right in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, what makes the hub move primarily is the curvature of our body. So now if we have the curvature of your body and the unload, there you go, then now the hub's up here and that's what creates the strike. Got it. So that's actually fairly simple. So you're just turning and you are unloading the golf club from it, if we just keep talking about this trail hand mm -hmm. from extension to flexion. That's really all that we're doing. So the complexities are more in the backswing and into the transition. Okay. Okay, so that's what we wanna gain access to is there. So how do we set ourselves up for success so that you actually can do that sure. and not just recover the golf club because of where it's at mm -hmm. at the end of transition? Okay. That's the question that a lot of people should be asking themselves. Sure. Okay, so let's go backswing first. Head and hold the golf club right up in front. Um, and I'm gonna take the golf club from you. Keep your hands right here. We'll just keep talking about this trail hand. Okay. Pronation, supination. What would that do to the golf club? What would pronation do to the club? Pronation would shut the face. Would shut the face. And let's do that again. And just make sure that this point in space right here in this elbow joint doesn't move. There you go. What's easy to do, guys, <laughs> because if, if I just do that, that is internal rotation of the humerus, and instead of arm action, we're talking hand action only. So this point in space is going to stay. Show pronation again. Show supination. There you go. So that's only the ulnar and the radius rotating. So that's keeping this whole upper arm segment still mm -hmm. yep. and just showing now what the hands leak, can do. For sure. Fair but enough. for the sake of like just this video, it's what's going on in the hands. Okay. Okay, so if you hold the golf club, just with that trail hand, show um, supination, opens the face, go back to stock, show pronation, shuts the face. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, let me have that. Okay, RD and UD, so this is RD, radial devi deviation, UD is ulnar deviation. 
So RD. Yeah, we talk RD. about hinge a lot. Mm -hmm. Problem with hinge is you can do two different things to hinge it. Mm. Okay. Okay, so you can go radial, you can go ulnar. Okay, what does that make the golf club look like? It just goes up and down. So now we're managing the center of mass. It's just going up and down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, or I could say hinge, extension, flexion. So when somebody goes, hinge the club, well, how? Yeah, because yeah. you can do three things. You mm -hmm. could do only RDUD, you sure. can do only extension and flexion, or you do a blend of both. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so if you're holding the golf club here, go ahead and show extension and flexion. There you go. What we prefer to see is a combo of three actions in the backswing here. Okay. And the backswing meaning, like we're only talking about to like P2.5, P3 max, so that then we can go into the transition. We can transition into the transition. Okay. Okay. But we love to see guys like if you watch dustin johnson he just presets all these movements early yeah kind of like that exactly and then he'll start to turn second that's why dj looks the way that he does and the hub the, the hub goes away from him early mm -hmm. okay because he is throwing extension along with pronation okay so if you just hold this golf club up in front of you show pronation of this trail would, would mm -hmm. close the face. Okay. Extension of the trail wrist would make the golf club go here. Mm. Now that's interesting because the, the center of mass just went up, right? Yes. Because what we talked about before is extension and flexion just makes the center of mass go side to side and RD and UD make the golf club go up and down. Mm -hmm. So why did the center of mass go up? Because we added a little pronation in there. Uh -huh. So if you go pronation and now you go just into extension, so notice how TJ's hand looks this way. Yeah. And if I go into extension, there goes the golf club. Mm -hmm. Now there's an amount, a certain amount of, of radial deviation in there. There's a little bit of a hinge. Sure. Not a ton for most players what they feel. But really what that feels like is this force, mm -hmm. but now it's moving up in front of me instead. There you go, exactly. Now when you do that, do that again. Okay. Look at, go ahead. See how that club is shutting down? Yes. Which is awesome. So we're shutting the face. Okay. Got it. Okay. You can see that because a lot of the time, like see this lead wrist now bow out. The bow is more of a flexion state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go back to neutral. See how now we don't have this bow. Just show rotation of the shaft. There you go. See how that goes into a bowed state. Mm. So now this is bowing out more. It's going front. There you go. Exactly. So it's just a little twist. What's the face doing? Yeah, it's you're exactly. You're twisting the shaft in space. <laughs> and That's the face what, shuts. And the face shuts. Boom. Done. There's 2.5. So there's the backswing. Okay. Okay. Now there's other videos on what we prefer to see with like spirals and whatnot. Mm -hmm. This is just on how the hands go. So what would be kind of cool is you can geek around a little bit and go. What does my body do in the backswing? What do my hands do to really support that? Because again, what, what we're looking for is a low rate of rotation in the club face through the strike. Mm -hmm. And that low rate of rotation is purely because of the trail wrist going from extension mm -hmm. to flexion. The lead wrist would be going from flexion to extension. So it's that unload. It's a low rate of rotation. So if you blend this idea of what the hands do, mm -hmm. you go back and watch some of our other videos on say body action, mm -hmm. right? You can start to get an idea of what pieces go together yes. to support what you're trying to do. Right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So let's go just into the backswing. So right here at like P2.5 or P3. So again, just to reiterate, we've got a pronation of the trail wrist, mm -hmm. okay, trail hand structure, and extension of the trail wrist. Mm -hmm. Now we're loaded. Okay. So if you just kept spiraling, turn, turn, turn up to the top, nothing changes here at all. You didn't do anything because you got it done early, just like DJ. Yeah. Okay. Now, as you drop, okay, and then start to bounce into right bend, there you go. See where the center of mass because of that right bend just went? Mm -hmm. It's starting to go down here. Here's the funny thing. Some players need to feel an active, if we just keep staying on this trail wrist, UD. So ulnar deviation looks like this, okay? That UD makes the center of mass of the golf club continue to go down, 
But if you're in an extension state with this trail rest, if you throw UD, what you're also going to leak into is supination of this trail arm. So if you watch TJ here, there's UD and it leaks into supination of this arm. Now we're good. Now we're getting the center of mass down here. Some players need to feel this. Okay. Others don't need to because they get the golf club far enough behind them and underneath the plane that they're good to go. So it's a passive reaction to what the ribs are doing. Okay. okay meaning that I'm in lead lateral and then I'll go into trail lateral bend here. So if you do that again, just let's, let's show that, show a, show a backswing. Good. Now TJ is still in lead lateral bend right here in his armpit. And now as he transitions, he's going to go into trail lateral bend and see how the center of mass of the golf club goes back. It's going down and back because of mm -hmm. just this trading of the bends. Yeah. So some guys are fine right there. Okay. Others need that active UD supination to keep the center of mass going down. You got to understand and identify who you are. Okay. Okay. Now for your pattern, do you feel that or do you not feel that like an active force here? Depends on the shot I'm trying to hit. Okay. Um, and again, we just put out a video on draw versus fade. If you want to get an idea of that. Yep. If I want to start the ball more right. Yep. I feel a little bit more active. Great. And if I want to start it left, I don't feel as much of that as I'm okay. just curving around. So that's really interesting. So if you're a guy that's trying to work on this stuff and you're starting the golf ball left and mm -hmm. you're sick and tired of it, guess what you can add in? A little bit of active there UD you there. Yep. And what you're doing, what you're trying to tap in there is you're, you're really starting to control. So go back in there again, just into that delivery. Right there. Good. Excellent. What you're starting to control, because we've got these forces. See how this is like bowed out right here? That's what closes the face. So we got the face closed. We don't need to close it anymore. We need to get the center of mass going down and continuing to go down. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that you're, you're, you're locking into, because if you're one that starts at left, you start now turning and this stays on top too much, mm -hmm. there's your unload and it goes left. Because if you look at every single like high level player, boom, they look this way mm -hmm. at the strike. So I'm dual double UD, like yeah. that's UD, this is UD. Yeah, which is a weird look, right? For most people, they're like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, well, and what we're exaggerating there is we're delaying the unload when we're showing this. Sure, yeah. Right? But if I'm actually showing like that's what a, a tour player would, would roughly that, that look like. That looks more or less accurate, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even guys like Fleetwood that keeps the, he keeps this on here, okay? Mm -hmm. I still have some degree of UD. It's not as much. So it's not, mm -hmm. like a dress would be here, it'd be slightly yeah, exactly, in there. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So a lot of that is just passive because the, the forces that the club is, is, is ah. putting on the hand structure as it's So unloading. that center of mass is going down, which pulls those wrist structures. Exactly. There's the UD. Yep, UD. Dual UD. Yep. And exactly. then there's impact. Yep. Okay. And as it washes out, Whoa. then it, then it's, it's Super still in a little bit of a UD <laughs> action there. Uh -huh. But see how it's like, I got it in the UD. I'm not changing it no. and bouncing out of there. Right, which wouldn't really happen anyways. Yeah, unless somebody's pulling on the shaft, right? That happens, yeah. Yeah, I'm pulling it left. But yeah, we're just looking to have the golf club. All right, I'm in the appropriate amount here. Now, some people need to feel like it keeps going down, like we're talking about with those guys that start at left. Keep that center of mass going down. Mm -hmm. So what closes the face down then? Because right now, if I'm doing this, this looks open. It stays open, ah, right? Yeah. To the target. Uh, chest rotation. Chest rotation. And what, what happens then too is we need a passive, for most people it's a passive, unload, which means that I'm in, in, and this goes back to the first thing we talked about. It's an extension. As you start to rotate, boom, there it gets washed out. Mm -hmm. And now it's going into flexion. It's Got trail it. wrist. So that helps square it down as well. That's what, yep, exactly. So we're not just getting there and holding on to the darn thing. Yeah, you just don't hold it and hold it and hold it. Now, some people need, again, later on this curve to feel it unload. Some people need it earlier. Mm. If you're one that needs it earlier, then that'll probably feel like an active unload of the extension. There you go. See how TJ's like actively hitting right there with the hands. But if you're a player that needs it later, it might feel like you're turning yep. until and very it late. And washes out <sighs> late. Most of the time, the more passive that we can be, the better, because then there's like, anytime I'm actively throwing something in, muscle activation, uh, muscle activation that leaks into tension. Okay. And, and really good unloaders have very little tension 
it's in that space. Like it all is, yeah, exactly. So yeah. your muscles can elongate and all the forces can get out of the instrument into the club head. Mm -hmm. Whew, speed. Yep. Okay. But that's what we're looking for is like, how do we use all these different things that our hands and arms can, or really just the hands can do and it leaks into the arms, mm -hmm. what they can do to manage those three pieces. Okay. Okay. So if we go into this one last time, RDUD makes the center of mass of the golf club just go up. Okay. Okay. Uh, this extension of the trail wrist, flexion of the trail wrist makes the golf club go side to side. And the rotation of the shaft, which is pronation and supination of the trail forearm, is what makes the face either, either shut or open. Okay, mm -hmm. if you're managing all of those things and understanding how to manage those things early in your backswing and how we go into transition and then again through the strike, now you'll start to understand how to manage the face mm -hmm. at the appropriate time. So and the unload, meaning the hub and the center of mass relationship as well. Mm -hmm. So a general recap of, of kind of the forces we're throwing here. Mm -hmm. As I move into the backswing, setting this fairly early, yep. right? And that's a combo of pronation and extension. Yep, of the trail wrist complex. Of the trail wrist complex, so yep. that's backswing. Yep, exactly. As I move into transition, I would feel perhaps a little bit of UD. Yep followed by wrist extension yes through the strike yep and those would be the forces through those phases people can yep. play with yep so you could think of this as a load phase and an unload phase because i know this is a lot of information to just digest mm -hmm. the load phase is the pronation and extension of the trail wrist so now now tj's trail wrist complex is loaded his lead wrist complex is loaded but now from there to unload he would feel a UD and flexion followed by flexion pattern. There's UD, there's flexion. UD, there's flexion. So load, unload. unload. Yep, and that's the unload pattern. So you could even hit these like little chippy ones mm -hmm. where, where you're in here going, okay, I'm just gonna load. Okay, now from here, I'm gonna unload. There's UD flexion. And you'll see like how the shaft, the center of mass of the golf club goes behind and then out, right? Once you do those little two pieces, then you can just kind of blend in and now start hitting some like more one motion shots, yeah. but you'll feel this load, unload. Yeah, that's good. That will teach you like what it feels like. You'll start to understand just in space where the golf club is. Mm -hmm. How shut is it? Where's the center of mass? Where's the hub? You'll feel these things more mm -hmm. based on your awareness of these actual forces that get thrown in and sure. the actual movements that create those forces. You start messing around with that, then you'll really start to understand like, oh, that feels stable. Yeah. Meaning it doesn't feel like Wah, and just kind of gets lost down here. Mm -hmm. That's all just recovery sure. based on how you set up like in the fully loaded, loaded phase. Mm -hmm. Mess around with it and ask questions. This one's kind of a deep dive. Sure. There's going to be yeah. a lot of questions on this. Throw those in. We'll do our best to articulate the answers and the responses to those. And some of those, those questions are going to be really good and they're going to lead to some other videos that we're going to do in the future. So 100%. thanks so much. That was super fun. Hit some flushies, baby. Let's go. Let's go.